probably do participate in groups actually, and they will make things for other people and start teaching. Then you have your advanced people who have a lot of experience. They know how to sew, they know how to do French seams and line kits and every other random sewing term you can throw out there. They have prop making experience, most likely. They do participate in costume contests and probably win them. They do attend conventions, sometimes as guests, and then they can make and sell their wares as well. And I have an asterisk by this because then there's the people that I don't really put in a group, like Yaya Han and Kathy from God Save the Queen, because they're on a ridiculously awesome level, honestly, in their craftsmanship. So. They're masters. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, for beginner costuming, I highly recommend that you start small. There is no reason to seriously try to just go in head first on some crazy elaborate costume with 50 pieces of armor that, and you have no idea how to make it. There are a lot of good costumes, uh, a lot of Stargate costumes from the Stargate track that you don't have to sew anything for the most part. You just collect up parts, <laughs> put it together, and you can get a, a pretty screen accurate looking costume. Uh, that's a good place to begin. That's, that's some of the places that I began. Uh, then you find that there's other modifications you can do to things that start you into sewing. Um, I tell people that there's a lot of stuff on eBay which is kind of hit or miss. A lot of the uh, Asian companies that are selling stuff, kind of low quality for the most part, but some things not too bad, and some places, some of the items are a good start, uh, things that can be modified. Um, just something that you're getting a costume in your hands and starting to see how it's constructed and starting to see what you can do with it. <laughs> I agree with that because I've actually, when I first started out, I would buy some things made, in, made overseas and I would have to go back and modify and rip seams out and sew sleeves inside out on because I messed it up. And <laughs> it's definitely, I mean, it's, it's, it's a place to start without having to do everything from scratch and have a pattern it, all to begin with. Exactly, exactly. Um, also, when you're starting out on a costume, if you are trying to do a specific character or general, like, you know, generic costume, um, do your research. The internet is fantastic. The internet's outstanding. <laughs> um, years and years ago, you didn't have this, uh, this uh, type of information available to you. If you want to do a movie, character, you need to buy the VHS, hit pause a lot, take notes, do whatever. Now you've got um, photographs, you've got forums, uh, there's other people out there who are probably doing the same character, have done the same character, you can see what they've done. Uh, they'll tell you their mistakes, they'll see, tell you where they want to do things differently. You can actually see uh, certain costumes progress through time going back through forums. Um, and then you can just pick up right where their current level is and try to advance from there. Good point. Um, I'll go into this further later, but definitely budget your time and your money. Because you can sink a lot of money into something and have it look like utter garbage crap. because you didn't get yeah, crap. Uh, because you don't want to spend the time to work on it um, or collect it. and it just. Or you can just spend all your money and all your time working on stuff. That goes into the trinity. <laughs> um, you're gonna learn by doing. I, I do. I recommend learn how to sew, even if it's a, just a straight stitch. Learn how to sew a little bit and some basic sculpting. I think. I, I didn't know how to sew coming into this. Um, wanted to do a costume, had to learn how to sew. I didn't know how to cast stuff. Uh, got into costuming, learned uh, about mold making and casting, uh, metal working, electronics all sorts of different skills that I've acquired just because I want to dress up at conventions. I'm not going to lie, I'm totally a beginner with electronics I'm, and I'm about to start building a proton pack. So I have to learn that too. Yeah. And it'll be fun. <laughs> yes. Or you're not doing it right. <laughs> if it's not fun, don't do it. Exactly. And don't panic. I have seen so many people freak out when they're working on their costumes. I'm like, sometimes you just gotta, you know, if you're working on it, just gotta step away for a little bit and then come back to it. I had two anxiety attacks this year uh, trying to get ready for Dragon Con. 
freaked me out because that's never happened before. I, I only have one therapy text. Only one this year. That was, that was a bonus. Usually more. And don't worry about making screw ups because it can always be redone. Or covered. <laughs> okay, so budgeting for a costume, which is probably one of the most important things. You gotta use your reference images, that way you don't buy 10 yards of the wrong color green fabric. It's happened. Wow. I went for OD green, I got army green. There is a difference. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> Let's see. Um, does your character have armor? Prepare to spend time on it. Or money. Or both. Um, it's a, long, a lot of leather work. That's another craft that is actually. I mean, it's nice to have friends that can do it, but it's also kind of interesting to learn. It's self fulfilling when you can do most of the pieces on a costume, if not the whole costume, and go, I made that. Every little bit. And when people are ooing and hawing over your handiwork, it's a sense of pride. You know, it's a, it's, for me, that's what it comes down to. I, I made this piece. That's exactly, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Um, <laughs> set a budget and stick to it. There's no excuse for not making rent. That's Unless true. The proton pack. Put, uh, <laughs> put, put the important things first, <clears throat> and then spend everything else you have on Food, questions. rent, that's about it, right? mortgage. If, if, if you feel that you need to put a little diet in, kind of trim on that, that food. <laughs> Oh, I can't go to work today. I don't have any gas. <laughs> I mean, you spend all your money on costume when you don't have enough gas to drag it on. Good so, point. this is not really for the basic stuff, but it could be. But just be prepared to save and collect for quite a while. Because, I mean. And that's for save time and money because this costume that I'm wearing now was <laughs> supposed to have been done last year. And Tom just didn't allow me to get it finished. So, it had to be put off. A few things had to be put off for a while. And that's fine. Stuff like that happens. Or you can go into total drama mode and you know, panic over things and probably screw it up and not get it done anyway. Yeah, be at the convention, sorry. I refuse to do that now, I promise. I stopped. Um, oh, <laughs> good question. Um, yeah, so it's kind of my husband and I, it's our focus right now. Is our, um, oh, yeah, so far ours are both $1,500 a piece and we haven't built them yet, we just have blocks. I just started with this costumes. Yeah, So keep in mind your time frame and plan accordingly. If you're having a commission, please give your tailor or seamstress enough time to work on it. We will charge extra for rush jobs and inaccurate measurements. If you can, if you're having somebody sew something for you, um, go to them and let them measure you. That's always the best. That can happen. Have them describe exactly where they want the measurements taken from, uh, and double check with them. If you don't think that you're, you know, exactly where where it's at, go back because if you send them the wrong measurement, it's on you. That is very true, and I have actually about 20 measurements that I require from people when I make or when I do commissions for them. I want everything. Oh, and you guys can feel free to ask questions at any time. <coughs> okay, so why do you even need a budget? Because we're not millionaires. Yep, because when that, you factor in the cost of the convention, <laughs> it can add up. Because you have your hotel, your registration, I see, your gas, your swag. I call food. Food. I guess food. Who eats it? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I wrote etc. for the food. We well, do have food on. Food, okay. Um, it's good to set a budget. You shouldn't spend thousands of dollars on a costume that you can manage in a couple of hundred or less. Unless you don't know what you're doing. Unless you don't do your research first. And then you're totally going to spend thousands. Uh -huh. And in buying more fabric. I've got a beautiful dollar <laughs> that went way over budget. <laughs> I just put this one in for giggles because the economy is not the greatest. And it'll help you bring your character to life without breaking the bank. <laughs> Places like Goodwill and um, oh, oh yeah. you know, clearance houses, especially 
live in the, I live near Fort Minden, so we have a lot of parent classes for military stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are the best places to find them. I've got friends who came to Dragon this year. Every costume they did, they sourced out of Goodwill and other thrift stores. Mm -hmm. And there's some fantastic fun costumes, and they're having a great time. And you know, they probably got less than five costumes than I have, you know, into this hat. Yeah. And plus, you know, they'll probably get their picture taken because they really look They look anything. super. Yeah. It's some fantastic stuff. It's creative going in there and finding. Is all their stuff screen accurate? No. <laughs> but unless you're sitting there with a photo and everything, you can't tell, you know. But if you know the character, they've done a good enough job finding things that look like it, and the, and it comes down to they're having a, a fun time with it. That's really what it should be about. Okay, so when you're budgeting, you have to consider a few things like how much are you willing to spend on the costume, how much time and effort you're going to put into it. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that. Yes. Um, when do you need it? Oh, I need this costume done a week before Dragon Con. It's not good. You panic. You flail. It's, no, it's no, no good. Um, can you make it versus buying it? Some things, yes. Some pieces, you, uh, you do have to buy them. Some and stuff you, you can have source to buy. them. Um, and what quality do you want it to be? Do you want it to just be generic, or do you want to actually try to make it as best as you can? Um, it all comes down to time, money, or time, money, and quality, which I do like to call the trinity of costuming. Okay. So they're actually a trinity that needs to stay in balance. Um, if you want a high quality costume, you're either going to put a lot of time or a lot of money into it. Sometimes both. But if you do your research, you keep your money down. Can I think into that? Sure. I've, it, it, it's freaky because she just asked me to come up and, and be on this panel. And I've given almost the same thing at other panels, at other conventions. And she, she's dead on with that. I call it uh, time, money, and skill. And if you have more of one, you can have less of the other. Um, if you have tons of money, you can just go buy the costume or you can commission somebody to do it. Um, if you have more time, then you can take the time to learn how to do it, therefore increasing your skills and learn how to do it with four less money. <coughs> so she's right. It, it stays in balance. Uh, what you have more of is what you can work with and you can you know, work on getting the rest. Yeah, and the next one says, you want it in a short time, you're going to have your quality go down Most or you're going to spend a lot more money on it. A lot of time it comes down to, you know, like, to get the quality that you really want, you, you'll learn that you need to do it yourself. I agree with this too. Um, for like basic and budget costumes, I try to plan them out as far as <coughs> possible. I've already got my costumes for Dragon Con next year lined up. Yeah. I have to learn how to make a helmet. It's going to happen. <laughs> Basketball. That's awesome. You've got the skill. Yeah. I couldn't do a helmet, so that that would be a skill that I would have to uh, learn how to do. But, but because of people like you, do you post anything on the internet on how to do stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, I'm actually in the process of making a Jafar. Outstanding. Oh wow. And, and see if people were to follow his his work, then they could go back and replicate it. And take it from there. But if I may add to that, the two. Absolutely. I'll, I've actually posted that question on a lot of costume forums. And the majority of the answers I get is pick two, and that's what you're going to get, and the, the third will suffer. Um, that's usually how it's worked out with me in the past, and I've been doing this for five years. So. Um, I, yeah, I mean, like I said, you can you can focus more on your time and your skill, and you may or may not spend more money on it, because if you're learning the skill, you are definitely going to spend more money on materials. You're going to screw up a couple times. If not more. A lot. <laughs> um, for stuff that I do, if it's something new, I'll actually make a test piece and then, uh, you know, do my mistakes on that, see where I need to make changes, see what I need to uh, change in the process, and then I'll go ahead and make the piece. So, you know, it takes more material, takes more time, um, but in the end, it comes out with, with a better product.
And to add to that, not only do you want to make a test piece, but even if you're happy with the way the test piece comes out, you want to try and do a trial run wearing it just once because you're going to find something else you don't like. Yes. Also reinforce your seams. Yes. Stuff will fall apart the first run. <laughs> So we have some tips for keeping within your budget. I mean, this is more for, I guess, not really so much basic, but any costuming. You definitely need to start by getting organized. Um, plan it out. Like charts, spreadsheets, lists. I have a ridiculous amount of organizing for any big project that I have. Um, in fact, there's my board of everything that I'm working on or was working on because I'm done with most of that. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> see, a lot for time. I can't actually really stress that enough. You need to give yourself enough time. Um, and then give yourself some more. Because if you're like me, you underestimate exactly how long everything's going to take. That is, yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> that's what I put on here. There's no need to panic because the night before con, or you're at the con, and you're still sewing and hot gluing. Hot glue is your friend, by the way. No, no. One of the pluses is having done costuming for a while is that you'll start to get a closet full of costumes. So if that one costume that you really wanted to finish up in time for the convention just completely falls through, you've got something else to wear. You can still go and enjoy the fun. That's true. That goes back to the Don't panic. Nothing's worth freaking out about on. Um, again, allow your team search this time. <laughs> and also, uh, so you're emphasizing the measurements, please get them done in person if possible. Um, scope out your sources. Uh, and the most important is uh, part of all of costuming is planning. You have to plan every single thing. Just about. It seems like it would be really like, nitpicky, but it really doesn't help in the long run. You could do it that way. You could willy nilly go into something. It's going to take you forever. It's going to cost a bunch of extra. And it may not be unless it's, I mean, unless you're getting like steampunk, which is really free form, um, and you can change things along the way all you like. Uh, it's really not the best way to go. I have an OCD. I can't do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but also think outside the box. <laughs> Almost anything can be used to make a costume or a prop. True. <laughs> um, aluminum sheeting. I actually use that to make Princess Leia belts for people. Uh, it's easy. You can dremel it down in the right shape and the right dimensions. Um, you, can use it, you can actually use it for armor, I've discovered recently. Foam uh, floor mats is the big thing I'm making N7 armor right now. Oh, yeah. And it amazes me some of the work that these people are doing. Um, stuff looks like it just you know, popped out of the video game. It's made out of four minutes. Yeah. That's what my dog oh. followed me. Yeah. Yes. yes. Using materials like that, you also have to keep in mind that you're going to be wearing it and you want it to be as comfortable as possible. That, that is so true. weigh a lot less than resin. That's true. Yeah. Very true. Yes. A buddy of mine has a all resin, a buddy of mine has an all resin uh, Iron Man costume and he's miserable in that thing. <laughs> Looks good. I bet it looks fantastic. Yeah, but yeah. I've seen other guys do it out of you know other materials, half the weight, and looks just as nice. Yeah. What other materials would be good for making armor? Because I know I made armor for the first time this year, and mm -hmm. I used pepper for us, so like I made the different models and then like I had Yeah, there's a lot of people doing that now, and that's something that I want to get into. I really um, want to get into really, pepper for us. It's a really strange process because like after you yeah. paint everything out, you have to put it all together. Right, you gotta put it together, and then if you wanna round it off, you gotta round stuff and add things. But you know what? You, again, I've seen some amazing stuff, and you know, when I ask people, what's that made out of? You know, it's pretty much, you know, paper, card, paper, and fiberglass. Seriously. Sure. Um, I'm touching on what he said. You, there's actually a video out there that will teach you how to alter the Peppercora file to where it can be used with the foam mats. Wow. And really? It's a lot less painstaking work. I have an Alphonse Elric helmet I that actually helped from paper, resin, bondo, and I came across this method and I will not, 
I mean, I'll cut the paper out to trace the pattern on the phone, but I will refuse to use resin to bond the paper. Wow, and see, that's the whole thing is, you know, as more and more people do it, they come up with other ways, different ways of doing the process, and you see the techniques advance. Uh, you see them change over time. When it comes to armor, like, what's the best like, way to put it together? I know when I made the pieces, I, like, when I had the pieces, I had them all, but I didn't know how to connect them. Like, I kind of made a makeshift way to do it. It didn't work out too well. It sounds like that would be right. to talk to one. Like, unfortunately, <laughs> I, I can only say that I've got friends who have done it. Um, <laughs> And I haven't gotten onto it, onto those yet. I haven't, yeah, no, I mean, going back to the phone thing, I have a friend who was working on an Iron Man suit, I love phone stuff, and he was actually doing like you and tracing them on and connecting them, and I'm like, I'm not kind of thinking about that. Yeah, well, the um, format he was talking about, the printed directly onto the phone. Like, no, I actually, uh, I just use regular paper and use straight pens and pen it on there. Yes. Way, I, I think that's what I would have to do. Yes. Is there a Dragon Con um, clearinghouse or a kind of a place where all this information is in one location for people who are trying to make different kinds of costumes? And no. 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 Actually, there is. The, co the costuming track, is, if you follow them on Facebook, mm. they said they're going to be putting up links from okay. there. Oh, that's outstanding. Oh, good. Right. Right. I have to Most of the stuff that I'm doing them. research. I'm doing my Google right. search right. and I'm looking up certain things and I'm finding new forms and stuff. And it seems like if you're, you know, name some sort of sci-fi show out there, there's a group that is doing right. costume sport and you can see what they've done. There's Ghostbusters groups, there's Stargate groups, Star Trek, of course, Star Wars. It's all out there and you just have to look for it. There's some fantastic info out there. Oh, we got two. Okay. Can you repeat what they said? It's kind of hard to hear back. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Speakers, uh, yeah, they said that the uh, the, the costume track. Yeah, said, that's what they said. The they're going to um, do basically a, a website or, or something like that. They're it's going, going to, have to post links to all the info. Links of the uh, different sources that were covered this weekend on the costume tracks Facebook page and the website. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And or did you have a question? Same thing. Same thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, back on track. We're gonna. I'm going back to. Uh, I no, I, 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 I like questions. questions. Um, research your materials. Oh, questions. Okay. Is it possible to please turn up the PA system just a bit? Oh, okay. Um, sure. Maybe I can get a little closer. Yeah. There we go. All right. Sorry. Um, research your materials. Again. Um, there's. Like for moment, like dragon skin. Do you use dragon skin? I haven't used it. Uh, I use a lot of smooth on products though. Yeah. Um, I love that company. Uh, they're very helpful if you have a new pro project that you're doing. Uh, just talk to them. And uh, yeah, it's like, oh yeah, well, you, you should try it with this. Uh, try this product, try this product. Uh, here's tutorials to go look at. Uh, here's stuff on YouTube you can look at. Who is that? Uh, it's a company called Smooth On. Uh, their stuff is also sold sold uh, locally through companies called Reynolds. Um, now, how does that compare in cost to dragon skin? Because dragon skin can be really expensive. Really expensive, but from what I hear, it's like really nice to use. Um, I, I believe I think the ones who put that or what company is putting out dragon skin? I don't. I thought it was. I thought that was. I thought it was a smooth on product. Oh, is it? I think so. Okay. It is okay. It's yeah. <laughs> um, I use the inexpensive, um, the Reaflex uh, for my molds and stuff, and uh, uh, the Umu, whatever you pronounce it, the, the, the low budget silicon that just mix, mixes in equal parts. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. That's good results with that. Um, and then there's things like for basic costuming, like for melee, you can use metallic sculpting instead of pouring metal molds because that's just a whole other skill of, and I don't know, really advanced skill, I think, honestly. But the metallic sculpting actually looks pretty good. And, I mean, you can even get really close to it, and if they've done it right, you can't really tell. It looks tell. really nice. Yeah. Now, with, with me, I tried doing some sculpting this year. Um, for me, sculpting with organic type shapes is much easier. But when I'm trying to do like just a straight line or something and some nice even curves, oh, it looks horrible. 
And then I go back to my old standbys. I'm a big fan of using um, uh, sheet styrene, layering it if I have to for thickness, and then shaping it on a belt sander to get the final shapes. But I do a lot of stuff that's really symmetrical, and I get in there with a pair of calipers, so you know everything's identical. I, I get real nitpicky with some of my projects. So you're gonna laugh at me because um, I have on your like two-part epoxy. Works great for casting. It does. It sure does. And caulk is fantastic for molds. You can um, you cast stuff with the uh, hot glue also. Yes, you can. There's been some fantastic costumes. There's a Geiger costume done, and when he told me he did it all out of hot glue. Really, so you MacGyver, you're MacGyver. Yeah, yeah you, I guess you could say that. <laughs> he MacGyvered a Geiger. Get crafty, paint it, sculpt it, woodwork it. Because you can actually, there's, I've seen people with props of like humongous guns and find out they're made out of wood. Yeah, or wood, paper, craft foam. Yeah. And you can't tell. You cannot tell. And then your greatest asset, honestly, other than buying and collecting pieces, is learn how to sew. Learn how to sew. It will seriously come in. Learn new so skills, many. period. Yes. Learn crafting skills. Yes, learn your craft. Oh, now we're actually building a basic costume. Um, choose a basic character. A good first time, time costume would be something like a generic Stargate team member. You can do a... There's two types of Stargate... Uh, costumes you can do. You can try and get exactly screen accurate. You can search and find every single piece uh, by make and model like the vests and uh, and such. You can pay a lot of money for everything since it's, it's all considered vintage now. Um, I mean, they, haven't, they haven't made particular things in a while. It's not vintage. It's only 19 years old. It's not 20 yet. Well, either way you want to look at it. But, uh, yeah, there's an expensive way to go with that. And you will yeah. end up with a very nice, you know, screen accurate costume. And then somebody can go next to you, buy a black set of EDUs, throw on some patches, any tactical vest off of eBay for 20 bucks, throw on an airsoft gun. And the non-Stargate fan, you know, fan is going to look at both of you and think it's the exact same thing. Yes. So for the beginner costume, it's a fantastic costume. Oh, I, I agree. You can you know, walk around and interact with people in high-end costumes, and you can all have a good time. Um, where, you know, where I, I end up is I get the pleasure of trying to find all these parts, putting everything together, and then ending up with something. You know, so I get that pride level that I was talking about earlier. I'm also obsessed with accuracy. It's okay. I understand <laughs> where you're coming from. Uber. I know. Oh, my gosh. It's just, it can get Do you know how much I paid for this damn <laughs> it's not even for this costume. Hopefully not. Well, I'm not going to lie. I didn't pay quite as much for my Keller watch because I found it for 20 bucks. Nice. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky. Very rarely. Um, spend your time collecting your reference images. Uh, take screen caps of your DVDs. Can you usually really zoom in on a DVD now, I thankfully? Have, uh, gigabytes and gigabytes on my computer of just reference photos for different costumes. Stuff I haven't even thought of doing it, I've come across it's like, that's a good reference photo. I may want to do that costume someday. Mm -hmm. Save. I mean, and you don't have to be 100% accurate for a basic one, but you know, for basic, you, you don't. want to be close. Like yeah. I said, my friends who did their shopping at, uh, at the thrift stores, they're not 100% accurate, but they look great. Yeah. And they're having fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is more about just researching, getting your close-ups. Oh, wait, I just said don't be super obsessed with accuracy, unless you're prepared to spend more time uh, on it. Unless you're somebody like me who's super obsessed with accuracy. Hi. But the whole thing is, when you get that satisfaction of being super accurate and accomplishing that, you know, it's, it's kind of your crack that you're getting out of this. But it also goes back towards the Trinity a little bit. If you want to be super accurate, you're going to spend more time and money on it. Yes. That's so true. Um, again? Learn your techniques. Use online resources. I am trying to learn how to mold or do molding right now, and YouTube is fantastic. Excellent. It also just shows you what not to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Learn from others' mistakes so that you don't have to repeat it. Of course, pay for it. Yes, sir. Have you ever done anything with 3D printing? 
Uh, yeah, um, not for costuming yet, but yes, I have. That's a fantastic uh, technology that's coming around, and it's getting cheaper and cheaper, you know, like most technologies. What is it again? 3D, 3D printing. printing. You design it up in the computer, and then you send it to the 3D printer, and you print it out. Um, I'm getting you, my gun body from there, or from the 3D printer. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, do a little bit of smoothing, make a mold off of that, and then you can cast it in whatever material you like, paint it up, or just take the 3D printing and go from there. Some of the new materials that you're able to print with are actually strong enough for use. There's a website called Make XYZ. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's stuff like that. Even some of the printers are, are coming, you know, they're be targeted for, for home use and do you outstanding. Oh, yeah, yeah, resin. Excellent. Oh wow. UPS and Kinko's is starting to get three D printers now more yeah. to them post office. Some of them though are from what I hear they're a little iffy on what they'll actually print out for you. Yeah. It can't be it can't be copyrighted and if it is it's got to have some kind of permission exactly statement at the bottom you can mm -hmm. you know reproduce this and you know all the legal jobs. But if you save up your things to get that home unit, make whatever you want to. You know, if you get like eight or nine people in on that thing, it's relatively cheap. Yeah. Yeah, you know, right now, I think, what did you pay for yours, sir? If you don't mind me asking. I got it a little cheaper on Kickstarter for, uh, I think it was 2800 but... 2800 Oh, wow, that's not That's about what entry level is. When, when you think of it, when several years ago, 20000 wasn't unheard of for a 3D I actually paid... 1,500. Really? And my work is fantastic. Is that Excellent. one that you, did you build it yourself or put it together? No, it came fully assembled. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, see, the prices are coming down. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah, I make daggers and body pieces. And tell, tell me, the, the, the resolution that it prints, how much cleanup work do you need to do on it to make it look real? Uh, okay. so yeah, I just do a little sanding. Really? And uh, exacto blade. Oh, sanding. Very nice. Uh, which one do I get? That's good. Okay. I'm just curious of 3D printing, how much the material that you're printing with costs. Usually like $30, $45, yeah, depending two pounds, on printer. Two pounds of plastic costs me $27. How cool would that be? How much can you make? Yeah. Oh, it would be a lot. Quality yeah. lots, like, <laughs> the quality of the mega. I have a whole room full of it, just from like one school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, like I said, you know, it's it's, it's turning into a very... Uh, <laughs> affordable option for, for it. And the things you can do, because I know I do a lot of uh, 3D design uh, for my gunsmith work, and then have things usually done out on a CNC machine in metal. But to be able to take the, those same programs, whip up whatever I want to, and then have it printed out, yeah, it's just a fantastic option. Yes, sir. Uh, what kind of software do you use to uh, develop 3D, I guess, there's some, there's some specific stuff out there. I've just been working with AutoCAD because that's what I have, and then the companies that I've been going to can actually convert my files to what they need. If y'all want to see a 3D printer in action at the bottom of the hill where the game, the game rooms are, they got a printer down there. Oh, really? Guys are running it, and at least a lot, it basically makes it legal. So the 3D yes. He's been running the last couple of days. Oh, that's very cool. So he's got the program and everything. He runs shows right there how it works. And you said that's down in the uh, the gaming area. Yeah. And he it. actually it's printed out like 30 models since Friday. Well, I don't oh, need to have people over the weekend. He's done bugs, humans, robots. Wow. All right. So when you're building a costume or basic costumes. Get thrifty. Get very thrifty. Hit up your thrift stores, hit up your surplus stores. Like he said, your friends hit, they hit up thrift stores, yeah. surplus stores. Surplus all store, because you go to the local for, uh, surplus store if you want a good Stargate costume, set of BDUs. Um, you don't even have to do like the two pocket BDUs or anything, just the regular four pocket that's more common. A couple patches <laughs> off of eBay or at you know, whatever convention that you're attending, you can always find them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and some tactical gear less than a hundred bucks you've got an entire costume that looks pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. um, Goodwill is actually, or other places like this, really good source for costume pieces. Um, you can usually alter stuff. You can even use bedding and curtains as fabric. Sure can. Because I make, I mean I do historical reenactment and I have made many pieces of noble garb from curtains. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't be able to tell. 
And also you can look for parts and pieces at Goodwill that you can tear apart and use parts and pieces of the costume itself in a different piece. I've actually done that with a ball gown I'm doing for Bell tomorrow. And that actually helps with the tearing apart. It'll help you even um, make a pattern. You know, because usually, the, I mean, there's only certain types of basic patterns that the companies just package and sell as something different. And it's the exact same design. So, I mean, buying old clothes and taking them apart is one of the best well, ways to do it. Oh, yeah. Um, and yard sales. There's stuff that can be also modified. I recommend yard sales to a lot of skate punk people. I actually go and get all the brassy bits and give them to my friends who do it. And I'm like, maybe I'm able to use it, maybe not. Here, free. Things can always be cut up, especially if you've gotten for almost nothing. Oh, exactly. Or go to flea markets and get stuff. Um, I had two hat projects that I worked on, the one on my head and the one for my girlfriend. And we got some hats, uh, six for five bucks. And I tore those things up and I did everything that I need to. And when I was done, the stuff looked pretty darn good. And I spent hardly anything on those. Um, take advantage of sales. Um, sewing shops that were Joanne from craft stores, they do have coupon sales. Uh, make use of them. They will usually let you use more than one uh -huh. on your transaction. Yeah, Joanne, you should never pay full price for it. You can never. always go online and print stuff out. Once you're on their mailing list, they'll send you stuff. You can always get 40 to 50% off of them. The other thing is a lot of the big name craft stores have mobile apps for smartphones now and they have their coupons right on the app. Yes, that is like a favorite thing now that I've gotten used to. Um, buy, buy some stuff used. Buy used costumes if they'll, if they'll fit you or if they're close enough you can get them modified. Um, borrow them if they're similar in size and shape or if they're pieces that can that adjustable pieces. Um, and wigs, because I have to use a lot of wigs and also share them. Uh, work together, especially if it's going to be a group doing. Definitely. And like, you can share the load of, of putting stuff together, especially if you're doing group costumes. One can, person can make all of these pieces and somebody can sew all of those pieces. And make them more of course, it makes. Together. Your group looks more accurate because all the parts are made by the same person and it really cuts down on time. And then also you can have um, armor and prop building parties. Yeah. And then, but not too much alcohol. That affects quality. I so better. <laughs> 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 and recycle. Use pieces from your old costumes or even your wardrobe and your props because and stuff that you have laying around the house. Because usually even if you go online you'll see that somebody used like a, just a piece of PVC that they had laying around yeah. or something. Oh, I keep all my scraps. <clears throat> I do, I keep my leather scraps. Like once a year I'll end up like getting rid of it. It's like, all right, I am not going to keep this little piece of PVC. I can finally throw it away because I've got other pipes. That was only be a perfect size. I don't know, I want to throw it away. You've got to find it. You've got to line somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> As an example, um, one of my team members back there actually created a flashbang grenade out of plumbing pipes. Places like um, Home Depot, Lowe's, yeah. uh, those are your friends. Um, it's rare that I actually go there and use the stuff with what it was purposely built for. <laughs> to me, it's just costuming and spaceship parts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, here are a bunch of sources that I put put together and I could, yeah take a picture <laughs> um, or I can actually send the presentation to you I can give you my email address or whatever and send it to you but um is there any way you can get this onto the costume track yes. yeah. okay. or on the Stargate track I can get it put on the Stargate one yes I can definitely get it put there she has connections <laughs> okay. This is my favorite part. <laughs> it's chosen. Okay. <laughs> we have some examples, or I have some examples put together. Some basic costumes. That probably helps. They're up here first. These are not basic. These are gorgeous. Laugh. 
And now they're broken. <laughs> Okay, so I have some people up here. I have um, my nurse chapel costume up here, and I put like the price for everything that I've done for these basic costumes, but I put the time into them. The fabric was four whole dollars. Yeah, I know. Score. Cool. I know. Um, and I had everything. I, I mean, the patch cost more than the fabric. You had Mary's wig. I didn't do her wig. She did her wig. Oh, okay. I did my wig. Oh, you just that right. I, I see had. her up there. I'm like, Oh okay. yeah, she's on. So she is up there. Um, so that costume actually cost, cost me a whole twelve dollars because I already had the triple too. You did do one costume. I recycle. I really do. Um, and then my friend on the far right, the lieutenant there, uh, she paid a little more for her fabric because she couldn't find that double hit anywhere. And um, so her patch actually was less than mine. It she, she spent. Twenty-seven dollars on a whole Starfleet uniform, and there are companies that charge three hundred dollars for that. Yeah, I'm gonna swear on that for a second. I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah. I, I can't. I've made like nine of those scant dresses. I can't. I, I'm getting tired of my my TOS uniform. I, I want something new. Okay. Oh, and I have. Okay. And then here's some of the Renaissance Festival stuff. Not historically accurate. This is actually when I first started doing them. Um, my outfit on the right was just, I mean, it cost me oh, less than 40 bucks, and it's a pretty nice, well, well, for the time, it was a pretty nice pirate costume. And that was like the first major project I made the, the coat. Let's see. And then all of the guys are Goodwill pirates. Uh huh. Because um, you can go, you can find fluffy shirts, you can find, I mean, pants, shorts, you can rip them up, you can dirty them up, and it's so cheap. $10 a piece, maybe, at the most. That's pretty impressive. Oh, I have Melissa up here, too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my friend did a little, adorable little Dalek. I love the outfit. I know, I do, too. Oh, I mean, that's for me. Oh. Yeah. So she yeah. had, she made the skirt. She had the dress underneath it and the boots. So, and she sprayed the balls on there and glued them on, and it cost her less than $30. Oh, yeah, and I love that her little, her little head her Dixie cups that she spray painted. I'm telling you, you can use whatever. And she had lights in them, too. But. Oh, goodness, that's funny. <laughs> um, and like, my very first Kaylee costume, let's see, it was. Thirty dollars because I paid fifteen for co for mechanic coveralls. Still a good price. That's a very good price. They're thirty thirty some something dollars now, but um. No, those just cotton overalls. They're coveralls. They're the coveralls. They're World War Two coveralls. Okay, and it looks fantastic. Okay. And now if you go out and got like the Nomex flight suit, that often gets used. A new one of those is like one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. So. The price, not a bad score. But that's not accurate. No, I know. But you see a lot of people doing with it. Oh, you know, yeah. Maybe if you find a, a use set on eBay, um, yes. 50 bucks. Yeah, still, that's like, how I actually got my flight suit for the Ghostbuster thing. They yeah. use tan flight suits. And you can usually find them on eBay $20, 30 I swear I got mine. My husband's Air Force and I had to buy one. <laughs> yeah, that's hard to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> This one's scary, I'm sorry. This is a poncho princess Leia. It was based off of an outfit on a doll, and the costume cost me a whole $4. But it looks like the outfit for the doll. It, like the doll. it does. Because I used a tablecloth, and I found a pair of teal pants for a dollar. <laughs> they have princess Zelda up here. That one actually won Best in Show in a Costume Contest. Yeah. Um, I found that pink fabric for $3 a yard, and I made the belts, and I painted everything, and the little diamond was a furniture scooter thing? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was one of those. And I just, I threw Sculpey in it and painted it, and I was like, oh, look, it looks like the diamond. It's fine. <laughs> it was great. It was great close-up. <laughs> And then, of course, I mean, you can do generic stuff and basic stuff and have it look adorable and awesome. Yes, I have to follow it there again. 
I think the most expensive parts of that were the ears and the wings, to be honest. But. <laughs> Those are party costumes. Gotcha. <laughs> and then we did a whole group run, or we did Oron, which is a little anime, Oron High School Host Club, and they did actually buy the jackets because they were on sale for $25, but I made my dress, and I paid a dollar a yard for fabric, and I already had a pattern, of course. And then, like, I had, I had my wig, so my costume cost me $10. Because I bought two yards back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for wigs, are there tips or ideas on what to do with that? Straight up buy, or is there anything, any other options? You can make a wig. Um, you get lace, pin it to a wig head, and you can sew it in. To, and you can make and they're really, really fantastic wigs, but they are so time consuming. And they can be quite expensive depending on what material you use, especially if you want it to be like straight. Because that hair actually costs a lot more than the jumbo braiding hair, which is kind of wavy. And you can get that for $2 a pack, and there's quite a bit of hair in that. So, honestly, I would rather make, or rather buy them. But, um... And you can buy a wig, and then have it, you know, if it's close to what you need, you know, ec you know extra length, you can have it got styled to what you're looking for. And you can always sew more wefts into it, or you can cut it, you can dye it. Well, you, you can dye it darker. You cannot dye a synthetic yeah. wig lighter. No. Can't believe I was Even if they say they're hit, he resisted, they lie. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. No. I have melted several wigs. <laughs> and now we can actually show off some really awesome, not basic costumes. I'm gonna let you stand up. Alright, they strut. Okay, so this is Shelby. And she actually won first place in the uh, walking um, costume contest last night. Nice. And you have to tell us about your costume. All right. So for the most part, this is actually army issued gear. I am a uh, service member myself, and so it is still my gear. Uh, but as you can see, I've done a bit of uh, other things to it. We have added, this is just a basic airsoft rifle. I got this and the pistol as a kit from Walmart for 30 bucks, and it looks great. Now, it's lighter than anything, so I've got to be careful that I don't flop it around. But, as you can see, I've got a camelback. That has been a savior. We were marching in the parade today. Oh my God, it saved us. <laughs> we were all drinking off my camelback. Great thing about Stargate costumes, you have pockets everywhere. How many costumes do you have that you can go get something from one of the vendors and you can't put it anywhere? So you're either stuck trekking back and forth to your room or, and you all know how the elevators are. <laughs> so the pockets are wonderful. Even if you've got a costume that doesn't necessarily require pockets, I always recommend putting something in. But, I refuse to make a dress that does not have pockets ever again. <laughs> Let's see, um, the rest of my team disappeared on me, and he's got more of the other parts that we have made, but all said and done, I bought uh, the patches online. I did pay $8 a patch. That is without the Velcro. I put $2 into Velcro, sewed it on myself, and I have a complete Stargate costume. I am a generic SG-25 character. So working good. All right, I am the other end of the spectrum. Um, mine started off with uh, buying a screen used costume. Uh, it came up on eBay from VIP sales uh, for a while when uh, SGO got canceled, and I wanted it. Uh, the prices to me were extremely cheap um, for what they were selling for. And so I bought a uh, Lieutenant Scott costume for just under three hundred dollars. 
which I thought was great. I'm going to have a nice screen use piece, and that's going to be outstanding. Um, my goal was, one, to have it, and then two, I was going to replicate everything in the costume and have a nice, accurate screen, accurate costume that I could wear to the conventions. Uh, two things that surprised me when I got it. One, the jacket is a lot more complicated than I ever expected from just a costume. Um, it's got a silk-like lining in it, it's got shoulder pads in it, hidden pockets, and I've gotten better at, uh, at sewing and such, but this was beyond my ability. So what you see here is the screen used piece. Now, when it came to the pants, all the second thing surprised me, it fit. Um, they advertised as a size 40, it actually was a size 42, so score. Um, unfortunately, Brian Smith, the actor who wore the costume, uh, does not have as much rear end as I do. So uh, his 32 size pants I could not stuff into. So I did have to come up with uh, making pants. Hadn't done that before. Um, first, uh, reference photos, even though I did have a set of screen use pants in hand, I still went to reference photos to see if there was any other differences, anything I was missing on it. Um, like everything panned out fine. Uh, then I went to Joanne Fabrics and I sat down with the pants and started looking through uh, patterns. I wanted something that was constructed very similar to, to what I had in hand. Um, little details, there's like some darts in the back and everything that I was looking for. Found something that looked about right. Um, constructed all of that. Uh, as I said, make a test, you know, test piece. I made a test set of pants to where I went by the pattern, um, added the pockets and everything measuring off the screen used. Uh, finished it, saw what was accurate, what needed to be changed, did that, and came up with these. Um, I think they turned out pretty well. I was happy with it. Everything else, uh, found the proper uh, tactical vest that was used on the show. Uh, it required a modification of cutting off a couple pockets and putting a, uh, a mag pouch on here that was then modified to hold a radio. Uh, this was not bad. I think I paid $30 on eBay for it and another $15 to get the mag pouch because I actually had to go to the company to purchase that. Uh, found the parts for the proper screen use radio, uh, put that all together, goggles. Uh, actually had some M9 magazines lying around, so slipped those in. Uh, had a set of the boots, because in the episode I was trying to recreate, we actually wore uh, these that I was using for one of my other SG costumes. And that gave me the basic stuff. Uh, the other thing was hat. I said uh, earlier, I've never made a hat before. Um, VIP auctions, I was always looking for them to put a screen-used hat up. Never happening, never happening. The ones that did go up went up before I started searching. Um, but then one day, the pattern that they used came up for sale. Great, I'll get a pattern. Um, I was figuring I was going to like bid $100 on this thing if I had to. I wanted this pattern. I was the only bidder, 15 bucks, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I learned how to do this hat. And it looks like, you know, from a distance, looks just like a regular military hat. It's when you get up close, you see how it's constructed and some sewing lines and stuff that go through it, some tabs on the back and rings and stuff. You could easily make a copy of this hat for almost nothing, getting just a regular military issue hat and adding a few rings on the side. But I wanted screen accurate. That's what I always go for. Um, and that was it. So that was this costume. Price-wise, I had the material, like I said, $300 for the screen use costume. If you could get a hold of the jacket for that, which usually SG-1 off-world jackets are about three twenty-five for those, you get that, so around that, say under 500 bucks, you can put it together, kind of pricey and everything, but when you're looking for that level that I want, something that would be close, like I said earlier, you could put this together for 100 bucks. Wouldn't be screen accurate, but to the non-Stargate fan, you'd look just like me, and we'd all have just as much fun. Now that's actually that's really surprising, because I've seen that vest go for a lot of money. I got lucky. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, you get lucky on eBay. This one, somebody had it, unused, they hadn't used it, they bought it, they put it up, I snagged it. Good. Yeah. eBay can be your friend. Thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. It was uh, from Condor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I need your help. Need help. Yeah, we want.
wanted us to show off some of the screen use costumes. Because these are more, or obviously more advanced. Granted, I can see, I can look at this one right here, and I'm looking at the lines, and I can totally actually recreate that, probably. Because I can see the cartridge bleeding in the skirt, and I can see the princess scenes here, and I see that it's, it's a wool material. And, but. Fire! Fire! Sorry. <laughs> and it, it's very heavy, and it's a really good quality costume. Let's see, does it have looking? Oh, it has looking hard in the front. That's actually probably how I would have tried to make that too. Have, have <laughs> See, that's beyond my my level. Um, I, I was like I said when I got this, I was thinking something like a pair of BDU uh, type jacket with a slightly different cut or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that I could I could repli I have replicated that. Uh, in smaller sizes for my girlfriend who can't even fit into an extra small. 